What's going on guys? Sin for the win here and welcome to our new franchise mode with the Buffalo Sabres. A little bit longer than I wanted to start this series, but a new roster update just came out which is hilarious because I just finished um, putting my touches on the previous roster last night, so I thought that was kind of entertaining, but I was able to merge the major changes that I made such as creating the players that weren't in the game. Uh, Wallstrom, Zadina, Carter Hart was taken out because of the AHL thing, and uh, Quinn Hughes, also Jack Hughes is in the game, and those are the five guys I did. Now, if I'm, if there's any other major guys you you sh you think I should add, like you know top prospects who aren't in there and that you know I'm perhaps not aware of because of licensing etc., uh, definitely let me know about that. But um, so we're not going to get any simming done. I want you guys to chime in on uh, if you want to see any more guys added or who needs to be added as well as potential changes uh, to this roster right here. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be checking out this team and think and looking at what maybe could use a bit of change here. But uh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Hello. Not much here. Jesus. Eichel is obviously your... Uh, Wow, okay, so Eichel, Skinner, Reinhardt, your first line, and that's your only line, really. The second line is a third line. Sure, he's decent, middle stat. You might want to bring this guy on a bit more slowly. 79 overall, you could play maybe third line. With, like, Palmin. Palmanville should be decent. Pretty sure he's a playmaker, yeah. He needs some kind of a scorer there, two-way forward. Maybe Sabot could take a lot of shots, who knows, but... Yeah, maybe you don't want to start middle stat on your second line. He has got that elite potential. I don't know, maybe you do. Who the hell knows, but at least you start with a couple elites up here. Um, so yeah, then you have you have Dolan in the defensive core. I already kind of shifted him around. I'll probably start him in the top four. You likely want to bring him along relatively slowly to get him to make sure that he grows and he gets up to a top two guy. Like if you start him in the top two, there's always the risk that you overplay him. Why the hell are his offensive stats so low? 84 and 83, really? He's listed as a two-way guy. I don't consider Rasmus Dahl. I mean, he you know what? Don't get me wrong. He actually is not too bad defensively. And so maybe he could be a two-way guy, but I think his offensive stuff should be higher. Maybe you could take it away from a couple places. Like, I would maybe lower his defense slightly and up his offense because it, he's at 82 overall. To only have 84 awareness and 83 passing respectfully is a bit low in my opinion. Yeah, I think I'd definitely make some changes there, Rasmus Dahl, and you guys can let me know about that. Ristolainen looks pretty good. Uh, Bogosian's a goon. And, uh, yeah. So, again, not not a very good team. There's their goaltenders. Again, not very good. Carter Hutton, I'm not really going to change his overall. I think that's pretty pretty much what he is. He can be good, but he can also be crap. And uh, Omar as a backup. Got a few scratches here. No defensemen. All uh, forwards. Oh, never mind. Uh, Casey Nilsson is a defenseman, so you have a depth guy. Evan Rodriguez. Wow, they, uh, they don't really have too much. Now, in the AHL... Might be a bit of something else here. You know, they got Alexander Nylander. Minor score, 74 at age 20. So he's on pace to become at least a second liner. But these guys have a lot of playmakers. All their, like, major major prospects are all playmakers. You think about Eichel, playmaker. Think about Middlestat, playmaker. Skinner's a sniper, sure, but he's kind of, he's done. He's at 26. He ain't growing anymore. This guy's... He's kind of done, so we got to kind of decide what we're going to do with this team. You maybe could benefit from a couple more years of drafting and tanking. There is Jack Hughes in the game after all, but I mean, you got Jack Eichel, so do you need Jack Hughes? Not really. <laughs> but hey, we'll see what people want to do. I don't think Cat Eichel just made the captain. I mean, hell, maybe one of them can play wing. I mean, but again, both playmakers. So, you really need some sort of a sniper on this team eventually. And hopefully pretty quickly. In your first couple years of drafting, it should be. So, that's the thing. Do you, do you start with tanking and drafting? Or you try to make this team in some way competitive? Or maybe we just play it by ear first year. But I, I don't see how you make this team competitive immediately. Unless you trade a lot. And even then, you'd need a lot. 
you need it you need a better goaltender you can hold on to hutton but you're gonna need a starting goaltender that's gonna cost some value probably some prospects you're gonna need an entire second well two parts of a second line center and left wing Ocpozo can play second line he's not bad it's not amazing but he's not bad or you need a first liner and play skin or second line like yeah there's just you got sam reinhardt in the first line again you probably want to maybe start him second line but he is 22 maybe you do keep him first line i don't know there's a lot of things we can uh we can mix and match here, but it's not looking very strong. He is a medium elite now. Interesting. All right. This is, uh, this could be kind of tough. <laughs> it's definitely going to be a challenge. Now, this team does have pretty damn good prospects. We can check them out in all their glory on a different screen here. I actually just probably got to trade. That's the easiest way to do it. You're going to actually see. Everything from there going to contracts is one way, but I prefer doing this. So they actually, yeah, you see, you already have a lot of, you have five, well, six, six solid major prospects here. Nylander, Reinhardt, Rissalainen, and Middlestat, Dolan, and Eichel. That's kind of your future core right here. Some of them already, have already broken in to the NHL, but that's definitely, you got to consider that as your core here. All right, so Tage Thompson, probably want to bring him up. What is he, a two-way power forward? Center power four. That's pretty damn good. Doesn't have the strongest of offensive stats, but he is 79. The ratio is not too bad for his awareness compared to his overall four above. Is it's decent. I think he'd be like mid high, like mid high 80s uh, for his offensive stats if he gets to like a second liner, which isn't too bad. Again, power forward center. What we have to see? Maybe he would be better as a winger. There's a lot of different things you could do. He really likes middle stats, so that's kind of good. Middle stat, we can get him the cap out around second line. But again, some of these things just might not work out. Oh, and another thing. Some of you guys uh, in my previous franchise and the Viking ones were suggesting that I turn morale off. So that's another thing we want to go over. The settings that we're going to be using. I'll show you guys my settings. Uh, they're pretty standard, actually. But I want to see if you guys want me to turn off morale. Because a lot of people were saying that last time. I kind of... It can ruin it sometimes from you having kind of a uh, a really deep team, which I can understand why that would suck. But at the same time, it is, quote unquote, more realistic to have morale on. Or maybe it's not. Maybe you guys don't want to see that morale on. So it's pretty standard how I usually have my settings here. Um, Is this even a good screen? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Trade difficulty on hard. Um, all the fog, All the fog of war options are on right now. Uh, for the draft, we will obviously be turning uh, we'll turning on show potential. That's what you guys uh, seem to like. We turn that on, and then you can see the potential of everyone drafted, and then we turn that back off after we already see, you know, who's going where and things like that. So that's that. Um, I have the sliders updated. It's not really much. It's just the injury sliders instead of that. I like to have injuries on, but set it down to 20. I feel it provides a pretty damn good balance uh, when you're simming. Sometimes you have a lot of injuries in an amount of time. Sometimes you have none. It's, you know, yes, it's, it's can, well, it's inconsistent, but that's what makes it good. I think because not every year you're going to be healthy. Not every year you're going to have a lot of injuries. Some years are worse than others and they're still enough injuries to kind of affect your line and not everyone's going to have 82 games played and it creates enough you know it, it really matters that you have that depth you know having depth forward depth defenseman guys you can call up from your ahl if things get bad as well i really like that about it so those are the main things now of course you guys let me know about the morale thing because that was a pretty big uh topic of conversation uh in our in our uh, seattle franchise especially like in the most recent years where we start getting a ridiculously good team and you got guys on the second line saying they should be first liners and they don't even they're not happy they start lacking the production which is very frustrating and you can make the argument that you know players wouldn't be that frustrated if they're playing on a champion caliber team you know they're getting cups they would take a little bit of uh less ice time which happens in real life i mean point in case my team the sharks you look at a uh, how many elite defensemen they have everyone has to sacrifice a little bit of ice time for the more completed product and everyone you know kind of understands that and you know pittsburgh penguins you got those the center depth uh you know even getting phil kessel who became essentially a third line winger playing on the first power play unit you know like there's sacrifices to be made here and there uh ice time wise to have a champion caliber team and i don't think it affects people that much like say if we tried to uh if we picked up like 
a freaking crazy right i don't know who i don't i don't even know how to uh who to, who i would think of but let's say if we picked up skinner in a trade we already had a stack top six and we still have skinner and we we're playing him third line plus you know some power play time on the point or something like that well you know skinner would probably be like the kind of guy who might want to do that so that's what i'm kind of thinking if we have morale off that won't be an issue if we want to plays like that uh but will it make it too easy and it's all about the balance so i'm gonna i'm gonna leave that to you guys i want to see your guys suggestions on that should we have morale on should we have morale offs um what would make this you know a more entertaining franchise for you and another thing i want to address is for draft in uh draft uh picks well yeah for trading for the draft etc what we're gonna do we're implementing a new rule here uh we're not gonna be allowed oh my god <laughs> three picks oh jesus um well all right well i was gonna set a limit for how many draft picks i could have per year and i was gonna say that you can have no more than two for every round obviously this one kind of won't count <laughs> because we started with this but i'm thinking we can't have more than two first can't have more than two seconds can't have more than two thirds two fours two fives two sixes etc and then maybe even put a limit on uh total picks like at 12 or 10 or something like that to to, you know make it make it a little bit like you know you have to draft over a, a couple years instead of just throwing all your eggs in one basket or you know really stocking up and having a ridiculous amount of unsigned guys i thought it could make it more of a challenge plus help us to avoid running into that uh you have too many unsigned players problem where you can't do anything <laughs> and you have to spend two hours trying to fix it or was it even more than that? I can't remember how long I spent on it. I put it out of my mind because it was so annoying and hurtful and stressful and I hated it every second of it. All right, anyway. So uh, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, every year we have like a limit. You guys think of what's a good limit. I like the, I, I don't know how many total, but I like the rule of not having more than two per round. Or if you don't, guys don't like that, just come up with a total, a total amount of picks, like maybe 12 or 14 if we're going to. Like, you know, you can still have two per uh, round, but that's the, as much as you can have. Or you can sacrifice certain rounds to get more rounds. And then uh, when it comes to at the draft, trading those picks, we have to still fall within the uh, the confines of how many total picks we could use in that draft. Like, no more than 14, let's say. So, uh, we'd have to be careful with that when we're making trades. We have to come up with the same amount of picks still. Or if you guys don't want to see that, then <laughs> you just say no to that. But that's kind of an idea I had to sort of make things harder because drafting in this game is very easy. At least, I mean, I, I caught on to it pretty quickly. And if you haven't caught on to it, I do have a video about how to scout, which will help you find tons of elites. I will link that below in, uh, in the comment section or the description. Maybe both, probably both. So you guys can check that out if you're new here. It's a very informative video, uh, short and sweet. But it tells you everything about how to scout and the most efficient way to do so and the most efficient uh, types of scouts to have, which reminds me, let's take a look at this. We're probably going to be making some changes pretty quick. Going to fire, probably even fire all these, yeah, all these shit guys. So we can see who's available here in the scouting things and probably uh, fire all those terrible coaches. Oh my goodness, yeah, there's some good ones here. Don't need the AHL coaches unless he's good in some... Uh, you know, he's kind of good in the QMJHL, so maybe we can hire him as a QMJHL scout with a B. Overall, is not too bad. There's also this guy who's a QM... <laughs> he could also do the a uh, OHL, who was an A- there. That's not bad. So, yeah, we definitely have a lot of scout options. I might honestly fire all my, like, D scouts and start hiring all of these guys. Because the first, first thing's first, man. You want to get your scout team to be really good. This guy's A-plus for OHL, too. A for USA East. I'll have to kind of, I'll do this all on my own. You guys don't, won't have to sit through all that, but uh, I min max pretty heavily when I'm finding all my scouts and uh, what regions they should be in. I like to have one, one scout for every major region at the least. Sometimes I have two, like in the Canadian leagues, I'll usually have two there. One guy scouting all the potentials, another guy doing character assessments, etc. Anyway, yeah, you guys will hear all about that in my scouting video. So anyway, we're going to go around here real quick. And I'm going to look through some of the other teams that I did um, make slight adjust. Well, not really. I just added a couple guys. Obviously, Detroit Zadina is not in this game at this moment because of licensing issues uh, with uh, the AHL and stuff like that. It's Is he going to be in the system? Good. Okay. What? 
Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, no, that, that's, that's, okay. It's just because I have the Fog of War off. I saw the top six and I was like, what the hell? Undrafted, really? No, I didn't. I put him in as drafted. Okay. Well, I might have to fix that. I don't, that really actually doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I did, I thought I, maybe when I merged it, it, it left some things out. Because I did have to reassign them when I merged. So that might be it. I can fix that if it's, you know, really needed there. But, okay, so Zadina's in there. That will be uh, elite potential. Don't worry. I can actually turn it all on to, so you guys can see, but you can take my word for it. I did put him as elite potential. Anyway, Islanders in the system. Where is he? Oh, he might be on the main roster. What? What the hell's going on here? Okay. Interesting. There he is. Okay, there. Yeah, I have to find him. If I had the freaking... <laughs> if I had potentials on, this would be much easier. There's Wallstrom. I got him in there. He's a 60. He started at 68 overall. I thought that was fair for when he was drafted. I, I kind of did everyone's overall, depending on where they got drafted. So, like, Zadino was like a 74. Uh, Quinn Hughes I have at 71. Wallstrom's a 68. So, it kind of is, is like that in their order. Speaking of Quinn Hughes, he'll be over here on the Vancouver Canucks in their system. Unless they have him up there, which they might. But, yeah, there he is. Quinn Hughes, he's a 71. It's actually signed. I had him. Yeah. That's a little bit weird because I did... I gave him a contract and then assigned him to the team. But maybe... Maybe it... Hmm. I might, I'll try to fix that. And if I can't fix it, then I can't fix it. But uh, I did have him at the, the actual three-year contract that he does have. So I'm not too sure why it's like that. Again, it might have been a problem when I merged... Uh, those created players with this new roster, that might be a thing. Anyway, and I also had to add back in... Okay, no, apparently no, I don't. Because Carter Hart is in here. So, okay. That should be... Oh, which one's the real one? Probably this one. Yeah, he's got the picture. Okay, so I guess I... Very interesting. He was not in the last roster, so okay, I guess I don't need Carter Hart anymore. But I'm pretty sure there's no two, there's not two to Zadina's. I might want to check that right now. But I'm pretty sure there isn't. I'm pretty sure Zadina... Let me just make sure that he's not. Yep, nothing there. Sedina there. Let's look for another one. Just just to be safe. I don't want to... <laughs> I really don't want to have that happen where I have two of a guy. That would be uh, not good. Okay, no, good. Alright, so just Carter Hart. I guess I don't have to. Uh, good. And that saves me trouble. Cause now we can see his picture too. Same with the Islanders. I'm just going to double check on that one. Or I'm pretty sure... He won't be in case. He's actually in college. So that's a little bit different. Oh, he's on the main roster. Yep, looks like it. Yep, Wallstrom. And then pretty sure there's no other duplicate. Okay. And one thing, I know he actually, I don't know. Yeah, okay, good. I wanted to make sure that Brady Kachuk was going to be in here. Because there was some questions whether he'd go to university or getting the NHL now he has obviously played NHL games injured right now I just wanted to make sure he was up there I didn't make him or anything like that because I assumed he would be in here and he is so all right there we go so those are the guys I have added if you'd like to see anyone else uh major guys who aren't in the game due to the licensing things or being in college or something like that definitely let me know because I want to get uh the rosters as accurate as possible to your guys' liking and um so that we can have the most uh fun-filled slash realistic uh franchise that we can have and i will be uh trying to make this more realistic than other things like i don't know it the only difficulty with that is everyone has a different idea of what realism is so sometimes you got to make judgment calls and some people won't like it but that's just the nature of the game here so if we were to start looking at what we're going to do as this team we have three firsts this year which is pretty damn good and if we are going to implement that a uh, draft pick restriction thing let's say we can only have 14 we got one two three four five six seven eight nine right now we can only acquire five more picks which is kind of a lot so maybe you guys want it to be lower like 12 total picks for a year either way we'll figure something out and uh so we think what would we want to stock up on we have three first that gives us a great chance to perhaps get go for jack hughes if we're going to tank and then we want to look through here and see if there's any tradable assets here the thing is they don't really have any tradable assets these guys kind of have a decent young core. We do still need a draft. 
but they don't really have all like those major tradable assets. This guy's kind of good. Top four. Got some really good potentials here. I mean, if you look at this team potential-wise, well, sure, it doesn't count. Um, this guy, Tage Thompson, right? Tage? No. Is it Tage? Yeah, Tage Thompson. Uh, ghoul. <laughs> Scandella didn't count. Uh, well, actually, not as many as I thought. Just another top six and a top four guy. And a few elites right there. So there's still a lot of room for prospects here. They have some decent top nine guys. But look at that. 2369. That guy's really not going anywhere. This guy is. 2377. He's probably going to be a depth guy. Not too bad. For me. Might even play him AHL since. Ah, who knows? We'll figure that, all that out. But yeah. There's actually not a lot of tradable assets on this team, which will make it kind of difficult. Obviously, a lot of those assets that they could have traded have been traded away. Now, what I've done a lot in the past is had a thing where I don't ever intentionally try to tank. We can maybe throw that out the window for this one because um, this is Buffalo. It's different from some of the other teams I've done. Where What I mean by that is I don't try to make my team horrible to try to get good picks. I, I kind of let them play and I can make trades to kind of get those top picks. But if you guys are going for the realism thing, it might not be too realistic trying to trade for that first overall pick to get Jack Hughes. Or maybe you just want to throw that out the window and say you can trade for whoever the hell you want. There's This is why I kind of do an intro video for every new series. Just to kind of try to cover as many things as possible. And to try to get sort of everyone on the same page. Um, but some things like have intangibles that you just can't really always sort out. Like the realism thing. Everyone has a different idea about what realistic is. And five years down the road, what's going to be realistic? I had a Montreal franchise where I traded Pacioretty. Uh, <laughs> and people were like, oh, Pacioretty's never going to get traded. Montreal are going to be contenders for the next 10 years. You know, I went for a rebuild with the Montreal Canadiens and then came back and we won, you know, four cups straight or something like No, it was four cups in five years or something like that. And... <laughs> that was a great series, by the way. If you ever want to check out an NHL 17 series, go check that one out. Anyway, it was just, you know, it's kind of funny. You get a lot of... Say, same with the Detroit one I did that year. Everyone's like, Detroit needs to keep their playoff streak going. Don't rebuild the team. What are you doing? And that, lo and behold, that year, Detroit did terribly miss the playoffs. So, I mean, what is realistic right now may not be realistic in the immediate or a few years down the road future. Like... From 2017, we think about both those teams, people telling me not to rebuild them. They're both kind of rebuilding right now. So, it's hard to say what's realistic and what isn't from that standpoint. So, we might have to simplify a bit sometimes and, you know, again, make judgment calls down the road. Kind of look at something as it is and not kind of what it is right now. So, like, down the road, you think, you know, oh, Connor, let's, let's, let's use this example. When I, I, I kind of, I kind of had the same thing in uh, our Seattle thing. I'm like, why the hell is Connor McDavid away from the Oilers? Well, we also kept beating these guys in like the first or second round. And he was 28 or 29 at the point when he left the Oilers. So I'm like, all right, well maybe, you know, I'm thinking of it from a right now standpoint when I should have been thinking of it from a his situation standpoint. But on the Oilers, never had any playoff success. The team around him was still shit. I bet Shirelli was still GMing and, you know. Maybe uh, it was his contract is up, so yeah, maybe he did want to freaking leave. Maybe he was sick of getting kicked out of the first and second round, you know? So, what is realistic right now might not be realistic in the future. So, we're going to have to make some judgment calls on that thing. So, we kind of have to look at a team situation and be like, okay, would they want to give up this guy? Or could they be enticed? Like, sometimes, you like, there's people you just never touch on your roster. Like, this guy goes nowhere. Other times, there's a guy who's like, they don't want to give him up. But how can we entice them? What could we give them that would make them want to give something like that up? So, there's a lot of things we could do in that regard for trading and uh, drafting and things like that. But, yeah. I think we'll pretty much have everything covered. Oh, another thing. We will be bringing back the contests. So, if you're new here, um, and you're not too sure what the hell I'm talking about by contests, every year, um, it'll be after free agency period starts. In this case, it'll be um, when we get the line situation, probably next episode. So, don't make your predictions this episode. Next episode, we'll kind of have our lines finalized. The roster's finalized. We'll begin simming. That's when you guys will make your predictions. So, for predictions... First things first, you have, uh, you're going to go, you're going to guess point leaders, uh, one forward, one defenseman, one for the team, one for the league. Um, so let's say you want, you think Jack Eichel's going to lead the, t uh, 
the team in points. So you guess him. You say, you know, team uh, team for forwards, you're going to guess Jack Eichel is going to lead the team in points. Now, for the league, you have to choose a defenseman, and it has to be for the league lead. If you can guess, you can guess, say, Ristolainen is going to lead in points, but he has to lead the league in points. If he leads the team in points, and you already guessed Jack Eichel will lead the team in points, that won't work. So Ristolainen or Dolan, whatever, would have to actually lead the league in points. So you can you can cho- choose both guys from, the, uh, from our team, but one of them has to be the league leader. All right, so I hope that made enough sense. And then, as, of course, we're also going to have the... Uh, people guess the best goalie of the league as well and that's not a team or anything you're just gonna make a prediction on who you think the best goalie will be now there can be ties something i mean in this game especially there's a lot of goaltenders who are really really close and we don't go based on the masterton or vesna necessarily we kind of go based on their end of the season stats because i mean some of them are way better in certain ways like amassing shutouts or amassing wins and things like that so we kind of don't base it on the trophies we kind of base it on our own kind of judgment calls and it creates a lot more opportunity for the winners and if you do win you get a shout out in uh before the next season before the predictions are made once again your name will be put on screen and you get an internet cookie for free that's how it works free internet cookie it'll pop right out of your screen not even kidding it's a real thing so you want to make sure that you get on that all right so i think that's pretty much everything that i wanted to cover here so we're going to do a little recap so you guys will know what to comment so first things first any roster changes that you'd like to see me team, whether, uh, sorry, like to see me do, whether it's to this team, a little slight adjustments, overall potentials, etc. Let me know. As well as throughout the year, any, uh, throughout, Jesus, throughout the league, any players that you uh, think should be added that aren't in the game because of licensing reasons or you know, playing elsewhere and make them kind of, don't make them a kind of obscure, like depth players of the future or something like that. Kind of, I don't want to go too crazy because I want to get another episode out tomorrow. And I will be on limited time as I'm preparing to move and things like that. Moving on the 9th of next month. So things are getting, uh, things are getting a bit crazy around here. And, um, yeah, so make sure they're kind of more of a major guys if they're not in here. Like, I'm not too sure. I I put in all the major ones I could think of. I didn't do too much research. So help me out off the top of your guys' head. If you see, uh, if you think anyone should be, uh, added in that's not in the game, definitely let me know about that. Uh, what kind of team should we be? What, what, um, you know, should we try to rebuild, try to tank a little bit? And should we be able to uh, tank on purpose or should we always try to kind of field the best team that we can? And let me know about the draft pick restrictions. What should be our uh, yearly restriction? How many picks can we have? Should there be a limit on how many per round or should that only be, you know, be uh, in the first and second round? We can limit how many of the first and seconds we get or just limit the total draft picks that we can have. Like I said, I was thinking somewhere around 12 or 14. You guys might have a a better idea of what could be more balanced. So let me know about that. Uh, Remember about the uh, contests, how to make your predictions, etc. And I think I covered everything. If I didn't, well, then I just forgot something. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say, though, guys. All right. The Buffalo Sabres franchise at long last is finally beginning. The next franchise we do will have a vote for what team we will do. Don't you worry. But this was decided way last year. (laughs) This has been actually put off for a couple franchises for a variety of reasons. For this year, mostly rosters. So we went with the expansion team. But that kind of covers everything. So Buffalo fans, rejoice. Jack Eichel has come to save the day here. Alright guys, so let me know about all the stuff that I mentioned. Remember to leave that like, and I will see you guys in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.